Terrapins and has led his team to four NCAA tournament appearances in the last five seasons. <coughs> Coach, welcome back. Uh, we'll begin with your opening statement and then we will open the floor for questions. Thank you. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, obviously, I think the Big Ten every year does a tremendous job with the media day. Not a lot of waste time, uh, which coaches like. So we get in and get out. I uh, get to talk about our team, which is which is terrific. Um, you know, I want to thank Jim Delaney for the job he's done, uh, making every job in the Big Ten a great job. Um, we're going to miss him. Uh, and uh, I know this is his last media day, so thanks to Jim and all that he's done. And the things he did for me when we joined the league, you know, playing, playing the tournament in D.C., uh, just a lot of things that he helped uh, integrate us into the Big Ten, so Jim will be missed. Um, obviously, I think the Big Ten's, I've been in a lot of leagues uh, in my career. I think the Big Ten's terrific. We're coming off our one of our best seasons ever. Obviously, our best NCAA tournament ever. Most wins, most teams on to the Sweet 16, or excuse me, the Final 32. Um, so, it was a terrific year. I expect it to be the same, obviously, this year. Uh, a lot of great teams, maybe a little bit better at the top. Uh, than we were, but, and every, but every bit is deep. Uh, that's the thing about our league, there's just so many good teams, so many good coaches uh, in the league, so it's, it's terrific. Um, my team, I uh, really like my team. Obviously, we haven't played a game yet, so we all like our teams, but uh, very talented. Um, we got some great depth, as long as our young guys keep getting better. And um, playing a terrific schedule. We've got a terrific league schedule again play a lot of the so-called top teams a couple times, so we're excited about that. And uh, just looking forward to getting started. So with that, I'll open it up. Thanks, Coach. We'll open the floor for questions. <laughs> this is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Turfs podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jacklidge Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855 Big Dog One right now. Mark Don Marcus from the Baltimore Sun. Uh, can you talk about the expectations uh, on Maryland this year in terms of being picked second, and and how does a young team that maybe hasn't had that uh, on them? How do you, as a coach, help them deal with it? Yeah, we love it, Don. We're we're excited. Um, our guys only know one way, and that's to work hard. It, it, our culture is terrific right now. Um, our guys are in the gym early, in the gym late, in the gym with, with me uh, during the day. Um, they're embracing it. We're all embracing it. Uh, we want more, and we want to be great. So uh, we're excited. We, we know we have a good team. And if we didn't think we were good, we were picked second, we'd be worried. But we think we have a good team. Now we'll see what happens. you got to play the games. But we feel like we have a talented team. That, it's embracing the situation and looking forward to everything that comes with it. Coach Jack Williams, D1CoachCorner.com. Uh, how would you compare Makai Mitchell's game to Bruno Fernando? Say it again. Makai Mitchell to Bruno Mackay. Fernando. Yeah. Um, you know, big, strong, physical guys. Um, both pretty athletic, you know, Bruno was at another level athletically. Um, uh, Akai is very skilled, um, really he's got great hands. Him and his brother both have great hands, can catch everything. Uh, Akai and Mikel both have great feel for the game, tremendous passers. Um, they've been able to pick things up real quickly. Um, and you look at Makai and you might not think he's a great athlete, but he can really run the floor. And uh, he's very physical. And you know, he's really what we needed. Uh, we've added some toughness to our team. Last year was amazing what our group did with five freshmen in the top eight. We weren't very physical, but we figured out how to win just enough games to make the tournament and win a game. 
Um, but this year, we're, our sophomores are bigger and our incoming freshmen are, are, are strong and athletic. Makai, Makai's a guy, um, you know, if he continues to let us coach him and, and continues to get better, continues to work on, you know, his shot and things, he's got a chance to really, really help us a lot uh, this season. <coughs> Wayne Viner with Turk Talk. Can you talk about what it means to the program to have two unanimous Big Ten first team selections and where do you see uh, Anthony Callum developing further under your tutelage? Yeah, so, you know, Anthony had a terrific summer. I mean, going into his senior year, he, he made the decision he wanted to come back to Maryland and make an impact and have a legacy. Um, so he has a chance to do a lot of things. He scored a lot of points, he has a lot of assists, he has a lot of steals. But he wants to win at a high level. So I think that's really uh, his, his biggest uh, thing going into the season. Uh, the thing with Anthony is we're just trying to get him to quit turning the ball over so much, um, uh, especially the live ball turnovers. It's something we've really worked on. Uh, he's gotten better at it. He's had some tremendous you know, early season uh, days uh, for us. Um, so I, you know, we're, we're expecting Anthony to be terrific. And then he's just a tremendous defender. I, I think he's, for his size, I don't know if there's a better defender in the country uh, for what he does. Um, Jalen, obviously, we got his back. Wonderful kid. We don't call him sticks anymore. We call him logs because he's gotten so much bigger. And um, he never has a sh shirt on anymore. He's always trying to show his upper body off. Um, but sticks, logs. It's really worked hard to expand his game. He's become a much better perimeter defender. Um, you know, we've worked on his hand. We've worked on everything. We've worked on his low post. And so he had a terrific freshman year. I think with, with, with Jalen, we just want more consistency. And that's what he wants to And he should be able to do that for us this year. Andy Sullivan, AP. Um, Mark, what do you think of the California, the, the California Fair pay to play act, and what sort of obstacles do you think that presents? <laughs> and also, do you think it's it's a good law? The sign of sign progress. Yeah, I, I think I think it's obviously a very complex issue. Um, as a coach, you know, you always want more for your student athlete. I, I remember when I played. You know, not you know, missing meals and not having enough money because um, you were you didn't have time for a job. So um, it's a little different today than it was then. So you always want you always want what's best for the student athlete. You want them to be comfortable. There's a lot of pressure on them. Uh, they do a lot of great things for our university, especially my kids. Um, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Uh, I think what we all want is is just an even playing field when it's all said and done. I know it's going to be a process, and so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next three or four years.